Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin or report today, Wednesday, October 17th, 2012. All right, so we left off with this article right here. Iraq intends deploying troops in north to prevent Turkish army military operations. So I've been covering the last month about Iraq asserting its sovereignty and that um, all of a sudden, ooh, Al-Qaeda's on the rise in, uh, in Iraq. We better go over there. So, But there are a lot of proxy wars going on. Right, Hezbollah, Lebanon, um, Iraq uh, militias, and that uh, going in there and supporting Assad and the Shiites, and then you have the Sunnis and Gulf states from Saudi Arabia and uh, other places, areas from Libya, especially North Africa, flooding in uh, to topple him. So they get in a Sunni-backed leader. Well, now you have Iraq urging Kurdish autonomy. So we urge the Kurdish autonomy to provide the central government with all the rights to deploy troops on the border. So. So before, there was bad relations between Baghdad and Kurdish autonomy that are hampering the central government's ability to take more steps to prevent the Turkish troops from conducting operations in northern Iraq. He goes on and says the uh, Iraqi parliament is concerning the issue of canceling the agreement about the presence of Turkish troops in Iraq. I've covered this before, signed earlier between Turkey and Iraq. He said that the agreement is wrong as it threatens Iraq's sovereignty. Turkey has recently started conducting a policy of intervention in the affairs of neighboring regional countries. This unjustified interference has strongly influenced relations between Iraq and Turkey and threatened their further development. He uh, went on and he said that they had warned Erdogan's government to refrain from meddling in Iraq's internal affairs, but in spite of this, Ankara continues to interfere by cr uh, trying to create chaos in the internal politics of the country. Then we have this, Ankara's war plans are ready. Armed forces are prepared for the worst case from October 17th. So according to this plan, which aims to use land, sea, and air forces combined, Second Army will play an active role amid the tensions with Syria. <laughs> with tensions with Syria, you're hoping to overthrow their, their current government. It's more than just tensions and, and skyjacking planes and, uh, and, and arming terrorists. It has been learned that the Turkish Army Command uh, echelons ha have prepared an action plan for the war, worst case scenario. Which uh, says here, according to this plan, which factors in Syria's means and capabilities, Russia's presence in the region, and the PKK, which is the Kurdistan, uh, basically group, Kurdistan army, the second army is going to play an active role. So just like everything else, the use of special forces. And going off what we were just uh, talking about, Turkey's southern buildup, the last one, was a buildup in the north. But uh, this article is saying that forces may target these Kurdistan fighters across the border. Turkey's southern buildup may aim at Kurds, not Syrian government. So we've been seeing a lot of this, right? Every day, more Turkish tanks are deployed along the border with Syria. And with tensions on the rise between the Turkish government and the Syrian government, there are constant discussions of a Turkish invasion insinuating them directly in the ongoing Syrian civil war. Diplomats, however, say that the deployment isn't nearly what it seems, and that while some of the tanks may have launched attacks across the border, the target isn't the Assad government, but rather the ethnic Kurds in the region. So they're preparing for a possible war, they say, because they see more and more safe havens set up inside Syrian and Iraqi Kurdistan. So he says, many see Turkey's endorsement of the Syrian rebellion as part of their Kurdistan strategy, figuring that the Arab Sunni nationalist rebels would be more eager to tamp down Kurdistan recessionist ambitions than the Assad regime is. I actually saw um, one article, I had to look for it because uh, someone left a comment about uh, how Assad was and their government was supporting the Kurds to inflict chaos in Turkey. So not sure how much truth there is there, but if it was, then that statement wouldn't make any sense at all. So, Turkey extends PKK strikes mandate. I covered this uh, just recently, so this ties into everything, right? The Turkish parliament has extended the government's mandate to order military strikes against Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK. Militants hold up in northern Iraq for another year. So, then Russia, remember this, Russian president p postpones scheduled visit to Turkey amid tensions. This was after the Syrian-bound plane carrying Russian nationals was skyjacked by Turkey. This is my website, ggnonline.com, or Global Government News. Um, also on YouTube, DDarko2012 and DDarko2013 are my YouTube channels. As I said before, the links will be posted in YouTube's video description, all of them, all the articles I cover, so check them out. You can follow my website by email there, 
Also, I have a news archive going way back to 2009, so you can check all those out as well. Then to Yemen. Yemen's been in the uh, news recently. Yemeni intelligence officer has been killed in a shooting. The senior Yemeni intelligence officer was shot dead in the capital, Sana, when a speeding gunman on a motorcycle opened fire Tuesday. Also, it says here it's the latest assassination campaign aimed at security officials as government forces wage a crackdown on al-Qaeda suspects. Now, there's al-Qaeda everywhere, but uh, some places I think it's just the uh, secessionist and it's um, people who don't want uh, puppet governments there. So says that the U.S. Embassy security chief was killed in Yemen. This, of course, already happened. This is from October 11th. And this didn't go in uh, any of the he real big headlines across the news, like Libya, right? That the U.S. Embassy security chief was sacked in Yemen just uh, six days ago. This is from September 20th. So, you know, not even a month ago, U.S. Marine presence stirs anger in Yemen. San is on high alert after a French magazine cartoon of Prophet Muhammad raises new fears of violence. This, of course, after the Zionists released their uh, little Innocence of Muslim video that infuriated the Muslim world. It says in an effort to boost security, Washington sent dozens of Marines to protect the U.S. Embassy in Yemen. Then remember this from October 15th, just covered it in patient eugenicists, tighten the screws on Yemen. So, yeah, talking about Planned Parenthood, uh, United Nations Population Funds uh, uh, releasing funds to them. So... Then from the Global News Service of the Jewish People, Rice at the United Nations echoes Obama on Palestinians' unilateral statehood bid. So, Suzanne Rice, the U.S. ambassador in the U.N., reiterated Obama's comments to the world body on unilateral Palestinian efforts towards statehood, jeopardizing the peace process. So, initiatives to grant Palestine non-member state observer status at the United Nations would jeopardize the peace process and complicate efforts to return the parties to direct negotiations. Now, remember this statement made by Suzanne Rice, who is actually a contender for the next Secretary of State after Clinton, I believe. She says that uh, Palestinian babies basically being granted what they deserve, which is their lands that were st uh, stolen from them, will neither improve the daily lives of the Palestinians nor foster the trust essential to make progress towards a two-state solution. Israel's UN ambassador, Ron Prosser, said that, uh, down here, would you make painful sacrifices? He asked the UN members. Would you give up tangibles in exchange for pieces of paper that the other side has proven more than willing to throw in the garbage? Just, just fascinating, isn't it? Um, it, it is. It's fascinating because they, they never actually were there. They carved out a land um, that was mostly. It was only like I think it was like less than 10% Jewish, and they gave 80% of the land to Jewish people. <laughs> you know. Israel calculated calories before blockading Gaza. I saw this and it made me sick to my stomach, so I hope you're not eating. Court forces release of a grim study. Before implementing its controversial blockade of the Gaza Strip, Israel did a grim calculation. It commissioned a study detailing the minimum amount of food Gaza's population would need to avoid starving. That 08 study, titled Food Consumption in the Gaza Strip, the Red Lines, has just been released thanks to the court order. It breaks down various food categories and ultimately concludes that Gaza needs about 106 truckloads of goods per day to survive. Any more, and of course you'll get what? SWAT team special forces repelling down on um, aid ships. So just like the owning the weather about the chemtrails in the Air Force and that uh, geoengineering weather modification, they say, what, oh, the study was only a draft, not an official policy. That's how they can uh, uh, basically uh, free themselves from any uh, sort of, what, uh, responsibility. But it goes on here, it says this human rights group says that only 67 truckloads a day actually made it, not the 106. Ultra-Orthodox up in arms as Israel prepares to end army exemption. I believe this is from uh, Africans as well, black Africans. Uh, but it goes on here, it says that, um, that now they're going to draft thousands of ultra-Orthodox students into the army. So, yeah, again, pretty sad. Um, you know, there's a lot of Jewish people out there that aren't really for what the Zionists are doing. And a lot of them were fooled into going to Israel after World War II. Britain renews allegiance to Israeli regime out of Iran fear. Goes on, says British Prime Minister David uh, Cameron has once again renewed his allegiance to the Zionist lobby when speaking to an annual dinner of the United Jewish Israel Appeal in London. He told his Zionist masters that his coalition government support to Israel was non-negotiable. He said in those in Britain's universities, trade unions who want to boycott Israel and consign it to international ghettos, 
I say not only will this government never allow you to shut down 60 years worth of vibrant exchange and partnership that does so much to make both of our countries stronger, but I say this, we know what you're doing, trying to uh, delegitimize the state of Israel. We will not have it, Cameron said. Then on to Canada's Harper. Harper. Harper's rock star status among Canadian Jews draws fire from critics from October 15th, same time period. The conservative government's uh, staunch support of Israel has lots of critics at home and abroad. By any measure, Canada has become one of Israel's best friends in the world, Fogel said in an article. It says, uh, from the UN votes on Israel to international efforts to curb modern anti-Semitism. Modern anti-Semitism, that's anything speaking out against Israel. In the effort to halt Iran's uh, nuclear program, Canada is in the lead, and Canadians are widely supportive of these policies. Yeah, this individual is from the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, Canada. Canada is now under total Jewish Zionist occupation. This is interesting revelations about the rogue Zionist regime occupying Ottawa and its dirty dealings with the rogue Zionist regime occupying Palestine. So Canadian Prime Minister uh, Harper recently received a World Statements, Statesman of the Year Award from Zionist Group in New York City for his dedicated ser service to the sinister aims of world Jewry. The award was presented to Harper by psychopathic Jewish war criminal Henry Kissinger, who also received what a Nobel Peace Prize, except his wasn't retracted like Obama's is about to. It says here, ban on Iran channels driven by fear of truth, says... Uh, Dr. Uh, Sarah Fraz, the deputy head of the Islamic Republic's Iran Broadcasting and Press TV CEO. He says that they think by silencing those outlets, free alternative media, they would be able to control the flow of news and information and at the same time cover up the events that they see fit. Then we have a land destroyer report, uh, EU censoring alternative news and bid to dominate the narrative. So Western media quietly attempts to censor growing global opposition and begins with Iranian media. Talking about press TV. And even though the EU has denied uh, culpability, you know, it says here, nearly no mention of it is made in the Western media. I haven't heard anything in Yahoo News come about saying that they've been shut down regarding the blatant act of censorship, an act that runs contra to all perceived notions of Western values, right, and democracy. The West has spent billions trying to leverage freedom of speech and human rights as a means to undermine, destabilize, overthrow, and replace governments around the world from U.S. engineered Eastern European color revolutions, also after the fall of the Soviet Union, to the latest U.S. engineered Arab Spring and all across Southeast Asia. Iran says the new EU sanctions are inhumane and ineffective. They go on to say Europe's new sanctions are tightening the bolt. There's a sense that something is shifting in Iran. So if the actual leaders at the way, way top, like Ahmadinejad and them, uh, are actually Western or globalists, you know, then they would be playing into the hand, right? If attacking Iraq strengthened Iran, and they know that they have a nuclear uh, a program, which if they are a, quote, sovereign nation, they should be able to have, um, it's kind of like they're playing a game, right? And they're going to use the people as pawns like they normally do. So they're going to starve the people over um, these uh, nuclear weapons, which will in return strengthen uh, the regime, right? The Iranian regime. Now those people that weren't really for them, the middle upper class will now be with them. So they really are. The globalists, that, uh, that is, are they're playing a narrative here. And again, it's a dangerous game. Pakistani girls shooting an opportunity for war, says former envoy. Anger at Pakistani Taliban, but no consensus on strategy against them. So it says here the Pakistani ambassador to the U.S. is calling for massive military ops against North and South Waziristan, saying that this is a great opportunity uh, to do so before the window of public consent closes. So why are people still split over confronting the Taliban over this? Well, Pakistan freed of anti-terrorism obligations. They don't have to do anything. But the U.S. billions of dollars are still going to flow. That's why. Which is why that uh, these drone strikes aren't going to end anytime soon. The U.S. drone attacks in Pakistan kill 80% of innocent civilians. So Pakistan, Iran, globals, globalist puppet uh, governments, uh, Yemen, it's everywhere, right? almost everywhere, CIA operative killed in Afghanistan. Why are they there? Well, let's see. U.S. begins talks to extend troop presence beyond 2014. Well, it's to guard the poppy fields, right? That's what they're doing. The ultimate form of domination over uh, uh, a defeated country is rape, right by the victors. Japanese government protests rape by U.S. sailors. But like Pakistan, nothing's going to change. Why? Because they need the U.S. to protect them for these uh, island dispute with China which is why the Japanese uh, leaders do things like this. After saying they're going to stop nuclear power, American government forces the restart of Japanese nuclear reactors.
This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you, and God bless.